Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Miss Jessa. Okay, class, please kindly lead the prayer. Harry K. Artaho. Please stand up, please. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, our Father, who art in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sins against us. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, class, before you sit down, please kindly pick up the pieces of the paper. Okay, very good. So, who is the absent for today? Is everyone present? Yes, please. Very good. Okay, now let's move on to our next topic. So, as you can see in the screen, do you have any idea what is this? So, it is a four pick and one word. It's usually a game up and the Android phone, phone, like that. So, I have here an images and you need to tell me what is the missing pieces. Do you understand? Yes, please. Okay, very good. So, the first one is this one. What do you think that picture shows? We have a two, four, six, seven um, missing boxes. What do you think it is? Marriage. Very good. Karen, what is it again? Marriage. Thank you very much. Very good. So, next one, we have... What do you think? Like, what do you think that picture shows? Trust. Yes, Ebony. Trust, Miss. Oh, very good. Oh, how can you say it's trust? Because the one holding his hand, um, he trusts the people who holds his or her hand. Thank you. Very good. Very good, class. So next, and last is what do you think it is? Love. Oh wow! Why do you say so, Karen K. Yes. There is a cupid, and um, cupid symbolizes love. Okay, very good. And also, the missing piece is very clear that L O V E. Very good. Now, class, do you have any idea for our next topic? So, remember, our subject is all about mythology. Do you know, or do you have any idea what our next topic would be? Yes, um, Karen? Uh, our next topic is about love. And um, I think it is Cupid and Psyche. Very good. A round of applause, class. Very good. So our next topic is all about Cupid and Psyche. So I know all of you have idea who is Cupid and Psyche, but I know most of you don't know the history or the story of Cupid and Psyche. So now, let me show you or discuss to you the story of Cupid and Psyche. But before that, let me ask Karin K. Artaho to read the background of the author. So, background of the author. Lucius Apollonius was born about 124 CE. He was an African, an excellent follower of Plato, born in Madura, a country a country sometime inhabited by the Romans and under the jurisdiction of Sephax. Situate and lying on the borders of Numidia and Getulia, whereby he called himself half a Numidian and half a Getulian. After he went to Rome and studied there the Latin tongue with such labor and continually study that he achieved to great eloquence and was known and approved to be excellently learned, whereby he might worthily be called holy historic, that is to say, one that knoweth much or many things. Thank you, Karen K. Artaho. So, the, the sentence or the, this is the background of the author. So, the author is Lucius Apollonius. So, he was born on 124 CE. So, next, let's discuss the... Wait for a while. Who is Cupid in mythology? So, Cupid, ancient Roman god of love in all its varieties. The counterpart of the Greek god Eros, an equivalent of armor in Latin poetry. According to myth, Cupid was son of Mercury, the winged messenger of the god, and Venus, the goddess of love and beauty. His symbols are bow, arrow, and quiver. His animal symbol is dolphin. His character traits is Cupid as colos and careless. He was generally viewed as beneficent on account of happiness he imparted to to couples both mortal and immortal. 
At the worst, he was considered mischievous in his matchmaking. This mischief often directed by his mother, Venus. So Cupid is known as um, that um, symbol, a person who or a mortal brings bow and arrow. And usually, he was ordered by her mother, um, Venus. So Cupid was the one who um, do the bow and arrow to the mortal, either mortal or the immortal one. So next is, let's move on to the summary. So, a stunning beautiful girl, Psyche, is born after two older sisters. People throughout the land worship her beauty so deeply that they forget about goddess of Venus. Venus becomes angry that her temples are falling to ruin. So, she plans to ruin Psyche. She instructs her son, Cupid, to pierce the girl with an arrow and make her fall in love with the most vile hideous man alive. So it is a monster. So Venus wants um, Psyche to fall in love with a monster. But when Cupid sees a Psyche in her radiant glory, he shoots himself with an arrow instead. So while Cupid seeing Psyche um, in the bed, he suddenly um, released the arrow into his foot. Meanwhile, Psyche and her family become worried that she will never find a husband. For although men admire her beauty, they always seem content to marry someone else. Psyche's father prayed to Apollo for help, and Apollo instructed her to go to the top of the hill where she will marry not a man, but a serpent. So, it is not a man, but a monster. Psyche bravely followed the instruction and fall asleep on the hill. I mean, in the hill. When she wakes up, she discovers a stunning mansion. Going inside, she relaxes and enjoys fine food and luxurious treatment. At night, in the dark, she may and fall in love with her husband. She lives happily with him, never seeing him until one day he tells her that he tells her that she wants to meet her sisters. So her sisters is very jealous of um, Psyche because Psyche has a mansion, but he oh, uh, the sisters urge Psyche to why not um, go to your husband's room and meet him and do, uh, bring the candle so that you can meet your husband. Maybe it's an ugly or the monster. And Psy, um, because of the jealousy of beautiful mansion, they deduced Psy that never seen her husband. And they convinced that she must meet a look. Confused and conflicted, Psyche turns on a lamp one night as her husband lies next to her. For a while, a pattern developed where Psy remained alone during the day. And then at night sleep with a husband she never sees. She at last convinces that the mysterious man allow her sister to visit her. Even though he warns her it will end tragedy. Psyche's sister, jealous of her place, consider conspire to ruin her and horrendous monster. Um, and then Psyche in that place, Psyche um, distrust or broke the trust of her husband, Cupid, and he tried to see what is her husband look alike or what her husband uh, um, physical appearance so she got um, um, she got tempted by her sisters and then and suddenly when uh, Psyche bringing a lock and then uh, the uh, oil um, an oil um, shambles to the hand of Cupid and then the uh, burning the hand of Cupid and then Cupid wake up and then suddenly Cupid and disappear and tell Psyche that um, you don't trust me because you cheat on me or you don't trust me because um, you never see who I am or what I look like look alike. So in order for that, um, Cupid run to Venus in order for her mother to heal the bird. And next, because of the love of Psyche, she go to uh, Venus and ask for the advice what she, uh, what she could do to bring back Cupid. Psyche meanwhile journey all over the land to find Cupid. She decided to she decided to go to Venus herself and plea for love and forgiveness. And when she finally sees Venus, the great goddess laughs aloud. Venus shows her a heap of seed and tells her that she must sort them all in one one time if she wants to see Cupid. This task this task is impossible for one person alone. But Aunt Pity sights and sort the seed for her. And then Venus is shocked because a psyche passes the first um, first challenge of Venus, and then Sy um, Venus thinks that it is the it is passed because of the help of Cupid. 
Next is, the second common is to retrieve the golden fleece from the river. She almost drowned herself because of her sorrow. But a wind speak to her and suggest and instruct to return the sizable quantity to Venus. The amazed goddess, still at it, now orders Psyche to fill a flask of mount on the river sticks. When Psyche reached the head of the river, she realized that this task seems impossible because the rocks are so dangerous. This time, an eagle helped her and filled the, fill the flask. Venus still doesn't give in. She challenged Psyche to go to Underworld and have first of all put, uh, put some of her beauty in a box. Mir miraculous Psyche succeeded. On her way toward giving the box of Venus, she became curious. Open the box and instantly fall asleep. Meanwhile, Cupid looked for Psyche and find her sleeping. He awakened her, put a sleeping spell back in the box, and take her to Zeus to request her immortality. Zeus grant, grant the request and make Psyche an immortal goddess. She and Cupid are married. Venus now support the marriage because her son has married a goddess. And because Psyche will no longer distract the man on earth for, from Venus. So actually, the story is all about the jealousy of um, Venus of the beauty of Psyche. So Venus um, let other uh, let mortal afraid of her to or fall in love with Psyche, so that Psyche, her fa Psyche's father went to Apollo to seek for help if she could uh, marry someone else. And Apollo tell him that she could marry but into a serpent or a monster. And then. Um, um, Psyche followed the instruction of Apollo. She went to heal and fall asleep, and then he met his uh, her husband. And because of the sisters' jealousy and curiosity, um, the, uh, Psyche uh, Psyche are tempted to see her husband with the using of lump. And then because of the lump, the oil tempted to the hand of uh, um, uh, what do you call it? the Cupid. And Cupid um, hurt because not because of the physical, but he hurt because they, she, uh, he thinks that her husband doesn't trust on, her, on, on him. And then next for that is the, um, Psyche go to his mother for the healing process. And Venus, um, I mean as Cupid, went to Venus for the help. And Venus give her a task. If she succeeds, she will meet um, Psyche, at, oh, I mean um, Cupid at the end. But fortunately, he succeed with the help of the goddesses. And now let's move on to the plot of the story. So, plots we have the all in the disposition we have all mortals so taken by Psyche's natural beauty, they stop worshiping Venus or Aphrodite and pay more attention to Psyche. That means no one has been making sacrifice to her shrine, so she sent out her son Cupid to shoot the love arrow at her to make her fall in love with some hideous beast Venus is planning to put next to her beside. Next is the rising action. When Cupid dropped his arrow on his foot, making him fall in love with Psyche, after Venus found out that her son fell in love with a mortal, she despises. She cast a spell on Psyche, and sh that uh, no more, uh, and so that no more worshiping um, um, Psyche instead of Venus. Psyche is then told to go to mountain and tap and wait for her husband. Uh, that what I told you that. Um, her father went to Apollo and asked for the advice so that in the rising action, uh, Psyche went to the hill and waited for her husband and fall asleep. Next is, I'm uh, sorry, the climax. So one night after she's, uh, her sister visited and gotten into her mind. So the climax here is where in, um, Psyche, uh, um, Psyche tell her husband that she wants to see her sister. And her sisters um, tempted Psyche to... Um, try to see what's your husband's physical appearance. And because of that, we're in the falling action. When she arrived, Venus was appealed because uh, Venus could believe that Psyche's nerve coming there and tried to make her guilty by saying that a nasty maid the candle was, was, le was left. So, in the climax, we're in the trust of um, Cupid um, destroyed because Psyche um, tend to see her husband's physical appearance. In falling action is where in Psyche went to Venus for asking help and um, and try to surpass the challenges given by Venus. And the resolution is when Psyche opened the box of kind of, first of, first of all, and suddenly collapsed. And when Vian, when Cupid um, 
went there and put the put the beauty on the box again and psyche uh, psyche wake up so they they already married they have and venus uh, venus will never disturb them again because psyche is already a mort uh, immortal because of uh, zeus next is we have the characters and characterization so the characters we have Cupid, so he is obedient and loving. So this is the description of um, Cupid. So next is the size. Next is Psyche. She is beautiful, distressed, and brave. So this part is uh, the description of Psyche. Next is we have Venus. Venus is goddess of love, beauty, and she also is Cupid's mother and tried to over and over kill Psyche. Next is na, the supporting characters. We have Apollo, Zephyr, First of all, Jupiter, the king, which is father of Psyche. Then two sister of Psyche, who is jealous of Psyche. Now, the point of view of the story is third person omniscient. So now let's see the settings. So the settings, we have Psyche's castle, a mountain, a mansion Cupid gives to Psyche, the wood, Venus shrine, underworld, and Mount Olympus, where they got married in Mount Olympus, Cupid and Psyche. Next is the conflict of the story. So there are two evident conflicts in the myth of Cupid and Psyche. The first type of um, conflict is person versus person. Psyche and her two oldest sisters got into argument because they are jealous of Psyche's and her lavish lifestyle. Her sisters start to interrogate her about her husband and what he looked like. However, Psyche doesn't know since she was never she never seen her husband before. So next conflict we have the but, um, person versus supernatural Psyche and Venus So Cupid's mother and goddess of beauty and love Get into an argument Because all the women were coming to see Psyche And worship her and her beauty Instead of Venus That's why Venus get angry of Psyche And cast a spell for Psyche Next is we have the symbolism of the story So the symbolism we have bow and arrow a Love uh, symbolize love Because in this Cupid make fall in love make people fall in love when he hit the person's heart with the use of bow and arrow. Then when that's when when the um, when symbolize wisdom because when Psyche listened to when she learned how to collect the golden pieces of fleece from the thorny briar. Hot oil, so that one um in the room of Psyche and Venus. So uh, symbolize pain, the physical and emotional pain of Cupid when the hot oil spilled to him when he learned that his wife doesn't have trust on him. Next is lump. Um, lump symbolize light to see what is true identity of his husband. Last but not the least is Ant, the first task who helped, uh, they helped um, Psyche to surpass the first task. Ant uh, symbolize hard work. When the Ant helped Psyche to surpass the first task and also when Psyche's hard work to find um, Cupid. Next is the theme. The theme I choose is love cannot live where there is no trust. Because in this story, the the theme of that is the distrustful of um, Psyche, who she will never assure, who she doesn't trust her husband of what her physical appearance may be because Psyche get curious of what uh, um, his husband physical appearance and also tempted by the two uh, two sister who got jealous of Psyche who have a lavish lifestyle. Next is jealousy brings destruction. So because of the two sister jealous of Psyche, when they the two sister run into mountain and suddenly fall apart, and that means the jealousy, their jealousy of um, Psyche brings destruction or death for them. Then fight for who you love. So the last thing, because Psyche when he found out uh, Cupid uh, become uh, um. Cupid get lost or I mean uh, what we call this one suddenly suddenly disappear. Psyche do everything to meet Cupid. He also she also went to Venus for help and Venus gave her a task. But but despite of the task of the hardest task, um, Psyche still fight for what he love or what she love, and it is um, Cupid. So next is the moral lesson of the story. So the moral lesson. It is that I learned that love is not just about loving and caring, but also trusting one another. Love the people not because of the beautiful appearance, but because of the goodness inside. Never betray your partner. Trust is one of the foundation of strong relationship. Be, content, be contented of what you have and never invest in someone's success 
every problem has a solution. So that is my moral lesson of the story. So now, class, do you understand the story? Yes, please. Do you have any question? Not so far. Clarification? Not so far. Okay, very good. I hope you understand the story. So now, get one half sheet of paper and answer this in 10 minutes. The first question is, how will you deal your own jealousy? Number two, what is the importance of Cupid and Psyche in studying mythology? The timer starts now. Okay, everyone, time's up. So let me hear the answer for number one, Miss Ebony Hermoso. So how will I deal my jealousy? So I deal my jealousy in a way of a decision. So if my jealousy is being driven by my own insecurity, so I need to control my emotions and I will always mind the consequences of my action. That, that would be all now. Thank you, Ebony Hermoso. Very good. So next, number two, let me hear your answer, Karen K. Artaho. So number two, what is the importance of Cupid and Psyche in studying mythology? So Cupid and Psyche makes us hopeful about love and also the idea that love will find you and true love will never really leave you behind. So we can see the perseverance of a man even when he is possessed by passion and the effort of a woman to overcome many obstacles in order to achieve the happiness of love. So that's all, please. Thank you very much, Karen K. Artaho. So now let's move on to... Now let's move on to evaluation. So now class, get one uh, half sheet of paper. Answer the following question. I, give, I will give you 10 minutes to answer. Okay, now class, time is up. Can you exchange your paper into your seatmates? And let's check for number one. What is Greek name for Venus? Yes, Karen? Aphrodite. Very good. Who was jealous of mortal name Psyche and why? So it is Venus. Venus. Because of her beauty. beauty. Very good. So if any other answer, kindly stand up. No other answer? Okay, very good. So next, what did Psyche's uh, sister think when they came to visit? Um, what, what? Do you have any answer for this one? Um, they were jealous. Yes, very good. They were jealous and they think that um, Psyche is living a lavish lifestyle so that they drive into their emotion that they were jealous of their sister Psyche. Now, um, number uh, four, what are the consequences of Psyche's betrayal? Um, Cupid was hurt and disappeared. Very good. So, in the story, Psyche's betrayal, um, Cupid disappeared and also Cupid hurt his arm. I mean, this one, this part of the body um, he, uh, he was hurt uh, due to the oil that spilled on his hand next is number five what plan does venus have um for psyche yes so her plan is to make psyche fall in love with the ugliest monster i very good very good everyone so do you have any answer other than karen's answer none so far me okay the same as karen kr Tahoe, check it Okay, now 6 to 10, what is the moral lesson in the story of Cupid and Psyche? I'll be the one to check it. So please, pass your paper in the front. Okay, paper. Yes, paper. Okay, thank you. Now, let's move on to, this is the answer, assignment. So, an assignment, it will be passed on uh, um, Saturday. Okay, write a composition regarding to this question. Is it possible to be in love even without seeing that person? Why or why not? Do you copy? Yes, miss. Okay, very good. Do you have any question? Not so far. Regarding to the summary, theme, settings, do you have any question? Not so far. Okay, very good. That's all for today. I hope you learned something. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Jessa. Goodbye.